If you want to record your own voice and add it to your PowerPoint story, you need to do this. First, borrow a set of headphones from Mr. Vogel. Then, you need to click on Insert, Movies and Sound, and you're going to choose Record Sound. When you click on Record Sound, this little dialog box is going to pop up. You could change the name of it, but honestly, I haven't found a reason why you want to change the name because it just puts its own name in after you record it anyway. The next thing you want to do is you want to press this little red record button. When you press this red record button, you'll see a little timer start clicking up. Once that timer starts clicking up, anything you say can and will be recorded. So if I click on this button, I'm going to uh, start recording. And one thing I've noticed is after I'm done speaking, I'm going to wait for this timer to click about maybe one to two more seconds after I'm done speaking before I press this little stop button. The reason why I do that is because I've noticed that it's been cutting off the last word or last syllable or so uh, if I just simply press the stop button as I'm saying the last word. So you want to wait until it goes through an extra second or two before you press the stop button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record two different audios. I'm going to say one that says, I love this class, and the other one says, Mr. Fogel is the best. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press this record button and begin. I love this class. And you notice that I waited an extra second or two before I pressed the stop button. Now what you could do is you could press this play button to test it. Now if that's good enough for you, that's great. If not, I could press this record button again and start over. If I want to keep it, I'm going to press this OK button. And and then it just automatically adds it to my list right here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to record another one for the second one. So insert, movies and sound, record sound. I'm going to press the button right here to start recording. Mr. Fogel is the best. Excellent. I'm going to click OK, and I got my other second speaker here. Now, unfortunately, these little yellow speaker things can be seen during the presentation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag them up top here and over here. Now, the most important piece is to actually have them work with the talking bubble, uh, which is the most complex part. This part was the easy stuff. Now, if I bring up my custom animation task pane on the right-hand side, you may have noticed that the two audio pieces are now put within uh, the slide here. Now, if you don't know how to bring up the custom animation, you simply right-click on a character and choose custom animation. Right-click on a sound bubble, custom animation, or click on slideshow, custom animation. All three of those do the same thing. Now, if you notice that these are separated, I have animation one, two, and three. But then this is animation number one, and this is animation number one. Not very easy to mess around with. What I want this to do is I want this, uh, this says Media 16. I want to animate that at the same exact time as this I Love This Class bubble. And I want Media 17 to animate at the same exact time as if Mr. Fogel is the best. So Media 16 is the first one I recorded, and I want it to go underneath this number two. So what I could do is I can click on it and drag it up to underneath the second animation here. If I let go, you'll see Media 16 is underneath number 2. I can do the same thing for Media 17. I want to put that underneath, which used to be number 3, but now it's number 4. If I click on this and drag it up to underneath number 4, and there you go. Now you might be wondering, why did you have to do that? Well, the reason why I had to do that is because it had its own trigger uh, attached to it. I'm not going to go into why or what triggers are, but essentially the only way that they would have worked is if you click on the little yellow speaker thing. Not exactly attractive inside the PowerPoint story. So I'm not entirely finished yet because I want the talking bubble and the audio thing to happen at the exact same time. So I'm going to click on media number 16 right here which is currently number three, but I want to make that the same exact time as number two. So instead of it happening on click, I'm going to change that to happen with the previous. So notice now both of these now have a number two attached to them. So I can do the same thing for number four. I'm going to change it from on click to with previous. So now I'm back to my one, two, and three. 
if I were to go into my slideshow and view the show and click three times. One, two, and three. And there you have it. There's my entire story. So adding a sound to your uh, slide is actually quite simple, but a little tiny bit of complexity added to it at the end. So enjoy.